Hello everybody and welcome back to the table. Today we have a new knife here straight from Kexmo and they actually sent me this knife as I did do a short video on one of their other less expensive models. So I thought that might be just a one-off contact but lo and behold Kexmo as a brand is actually moving up in the knife world and this here is a huge improvement on their prior less expensive model. And before I go any further though, Kexmo, I know you are watching this. Number one, give your knives a model name. I don't know how, how I can emphasize this or what to call this knife, but when you're comparing this knife to other knives, it's kind of important that it has a, a name, a model number, something along those lines. So actually, I am going to take the next step. <laughs> Kexmo, I'm gonna name this knife for you. You're welcome. This here, from this day forward, this knife will be known as the Kexmo Topographic. And of course, you'll see why I named it that very shortly, although you can probably see why immediately if you're familiar with that term. So let's take a look at this knife here. But first, first, let's chat specs. So this knife is actually pretty big. So let's pull out the ruler and measure it on out. So we can see the blade length. It measures in at about 3.6 inches. And looking at the overall length of this knife, it is about uh, about eight and a half inches long overall length. And so to me, that is a medium large, um, you know, everyday carry knife. And you know, while we're chatting with these specs here, so the knife weighs in at 4.8 ounces. So really for the size, that's not bad at all. And we're gonna see why in just a few minutes as well. So when Kexmo, you know, they sent me this knife, they emailed me, they said, hey, you should talk about the handle. And so take a look at the handle here. Here we have it. So this handle is actually pretty interesting and it's definitely unique. I own hundreds of knives at this point and I have yet to see one just like this. So we have some brown G10. Uh, the G10 here is super smooth in texture, but you can see we have these contoured steps that lead up here to the pivot area. And that, my friends, is of course why I dubbed this knife the topographic, because if you have ever seen a topographic map, this is very reminiscent of the shape and pattern of those maps. So while the G10 here is smooth, the steps and the pattern here, it do get, does give you some uh, texture, you know, really to grab onto. And it looks good. You know, so this is this knife here is brown G10. It's also available in a completely blacked out uh, G10 as well. And you know, while we're here, uh, looking at the handle. So the back of this knife, as you can already see, we have some red G10 and we have this very generous lanyard hole integrated into this backspacer. So if lanyards are your thing, they are super accommodating, very spacey, lots of room for um, all kinds of paracord and stuff like that. Looking at the handle as well, we also have a very nice polished deep carry pocket clip, kind of standard at this point in the game. Um, and this knife here, this pocket clip is gonna be a one position clip. So it's gonna be tip up, right hand side carry only. And the G10 handle underneath the pocket clip right here, it's super smooth. So taking the knife in and out of pocket is actually really easy. So you can take a look at kind of the, the side profile of the clip, easy to get in and out, no issues there. Uh, the, the clip screws here on the pocket clip, they are not flattened or flush, but there is still plenty of room under this clip. It doesn't really have a huge impact on seating this knife into your pocket. But really the noticeable difference between this knife here, the topographic, and its less expensive sibling that I looked at earlier is gonna be the blade steel. So while the extreme budget Kexmo knife I saw earlier, it used a 3CR13 blade steel. This knife here got a significant upgrade to D2 steel. And so what that means of course, is that the performance of this edge it should be significantly better than the 3CR knife. You know, better edge retention, better edge holding in particular. That's really what they're going for here. And of course you can tell, but they also chose to use this black coating on, and they actually used it on both color variations of this knife, which uh, should be super useful because D2 technically, technically it's not a true stainless steel. And if you use it a lot, you are going to start to form a nice, that nice patina, that nice finish on the steel if you don't keep it really clean and polished. 
And so I, of course, uh, was curious to see how the coating would hold up under some light use. And, you know, versus cardboard, it did fine. You know, I bet these marks that are here on the blade, you can see now, are probably going to wipe off, you know, easily with some maybe rubbing alcohol or, you know, any mild cleaner. These will come right off. Honestly, probably with soap and water, they'll wipe right off. And uh, while this knife, of course, you can see there is a flipper tab here. It is a flipper. Um, there's also a nice little opening hole that could be used to open the knife or to do the proverbial spidey flick, if that's your thing. It's not mine. <laughs> um, so spidey flick, thumb stud, op thumb hole opening, uh, flipper tab, a lot of options here. And uh, taking a look at the spine of the blade, we also do have some jimping integrated into this knife, which is going to be very usable if you decide to kind of choke up on the handle and kind of really bear down on it. Um, I do think that the black coating here may have taken away some of the bite, you know, so to speak, out of the jimping. But the fact that it's there is great. You know, it's there on a budget knife. That works. I'm happy. Um, and what you've probably already noticed is that on the blade itself here, and indeed the entire knife in my hands as well, there are actually no markings on this knife. So no company name, no steel markings. And I think on one hand, a lot of people might actually appreciate that as so many knives out there look like billboards. You open up that blade, you have names and markings and all kinds of stuff on the blade. Here we don't have any of that. Whereas on the other hand, <laughs> with no identifying markings, it does make this knife a little bit more forgettable that way. So if I pull this knife out of my drawer five years from now, 10 years from now, am I going to remember that this knife came from Kexmo? Not a chance. <laughs> um, so there is that. It's ups and downs, pluses and minuses, and that's going to be based on your personal opinion. Um, but before we're done looking here at the handle, let's take a look inside. We have steel liners, nice and polished, but what really surprised me at this price on a budget knife like this is that, yes, they are indeed skeletonized. So the weight savings from this, I bet, are the reason why the topographic here is coming in at less than five ounces for, you know, what is essentially a full size eight and a half inch long knife, less than five ounces. Pretty impressive. But of course, let's talk about the action. So this blade runs on bearings. And as far as I can tell, they're pretty well done. You know, the action here is incredibly smooth. It's easy to open, easy to close. And as you can see, it flips very nicely. And in the days that I've had this knife, you know, repeated flipping, obsessive, you know, borderline obsessive flipping, it really hasn't loosened the pivot at all. So the lockup is still really nice and tight. Um, we can take a look here at the centering of the blade. And honestly, like most knives I have with bearings, it's pretty much perfect. So the centering is dead on. And opening the knife, we can also see the lock up here. It's nice. It's early. No issues. No complaints at all. Just like I would expect. Um, but I'll also mention, too, of course, the detent here is tight. There is no pivot lash in the blade. No back and forth. Everything just feels right and tight. So that's all, all great news. You know, well, like I said a moment ago, I really wanted to see how this black finish, you know, held up against some regular use. So by regular, I just broke down some cardboard boxes that were laying around. And as you can see, the coating itself here, it did fine. You know, there's residue on it, but that's, of course, going to happen with any knife you use to break down cardboard. Um, the edge of the blade, though, it does show some wear. You know, I know cardboard, you know, by its filthy nature can be kind of tough on knife edges. And so this steel definitely handled it better than the uh, 3CR13 probably would have. And our blade edge here, it's a rough edge now. It's no longer shaving hair off my arm like it did out of the box. But it's still not totally dull. We have a rough working edge here. Um, I think I'm just going to strop the edge up, clean off the residue on the blade, and I think it's going to be back in like new condition. You know, but before we're done, let's go ahead and make some quick size comparisons. Like I said, this knife is a big boy. So let's put it between two knives here. We have the Benchmade Griptilian, the full size. And this right here also is the Mini Griptilian. 
So the standard regular size Griptilian is actually a pretty big knife itself. It's pretty beefy in your hand, but overall length, it comes still a bit smaller, a bit uh, lesser, lesser in size than the Kexmo here. So let's just check all three knives out side by side. And of course, probably what I should have mentioned here is that the topographic, the Kexmo knife here, it comes in around the $30, $35 price mark. Um, so it's still affordable, but at that price, there is a lot of competition in this range. So since they sell through Amazon, I'll see, you know, they, they gave me this knife. Maybe they'll have like coupon codes or discounts I can, you know, share in the description below um, to knock a few bucks off the price. And we'll see, you know, a few dollars off and suddenly this knife becomes a lot more competitive and more recommendable. Re sorry, <laughs> more recommendable um, in this 2022 knife market that we live in. So um, again, I well, I guess you could call this sponsored. It's not really a sponsored video. They gave me the knife, which is cool. You know, I love knives. So <laughs> if someone gives me a knife, you can darn bet I'm going to make a video on it. But if you have any other questions, things like that, please let me know in the comments below. Hope you all have a knife day out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.